Live featuring Professor Ko Sumit from Singapore. Brought to you here every week by dmetropolis.com and Lifestyle TV USA. Okay. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the um, uh, follow-up of the previous episode about financial analysis and the ratios as a retail investor. You've got ten thousand dollars. What you're supposed to do without relying on brokers and you know on the internet right now, you are you are urged to actually use a lot of software, a lot of websites to invest on your own, and that could be dangerous. But uh, what Professor Ko is doing today, she's going to break down in very simple terms some of these one on one concepts that we should know, and we. And the disclaimer is that we are not providing any consultancy for or endorsement of any companies. It's really about giving back to um, the main street people, the main street followers of our show, that you can share this uh, uh, videos to your friends. That at least you will have some basic knowledge. You don't you don't need to rely on people. You can get all these financial statements from the internet because they are listed companies. So Professor Ko, another day of uh, a wonderful uh, session from you. We're so honored to have you, the, the sought after Fortune 500 corporate trainer for all of us. Professor Ko, would you like to say hi before we dive into the session for today? Sure, thank you Vicky. Hi everyone, thank you for following up. It's really my honor and my pleasure to be here sharing with you. Yeah, Professor Ko, would you dive into uh, some of the financial uh, analysis that we are following uh, from yesterday's, uh, from the Fantastic. last session? Professor Ko, I'm going to make you the main host. And uh, I want to say that while you are pulling out all your slides, Professor, um, I'd like to recap some of these uh, slides that you have uh, given to us. Number one, profitability, uh, turnover, and also uh, some of these ratios that we have talked about. They aren't too difficult, and you're running through some of these slides uh, with us. And we've got we've got ten slides from you yesterday. I'm so excited for the next ten slides that you're going to share with us because we are really dissecting a company from one on one. Yes, that's right. As a retailer, when we go into a company and we look at some of uh, these financial statements, what are the key things that we should look up for? Step number one. Professor Ko, let's take it away. Thank you, Vicky. We will go back to basic and do what I call homework. All right, the homework is go to the financial statement, grab the numbers, get hold of your smartphone, and then punch the numbers into it. And the numbers will tell you whether they are really making money for every dollar that you invest. So we like to look at what we have done the session before, which is, are they making enough money net-net? That's called the earnings, all right? Because later on, I will introduce to you what's the meaning of P-E ratio, and it involves earning. But we also want to know whether if this company is productive, are they generating enough or what I call excess profits for every dollar of the assets that it invests um, the money in, then we go for the return. We look for ROI. But because we are buying shares in this company, we want to know for every dollar of my investment, is it worth? Because as an investor, we look at opportunity costs. If I can do this, I can use this $10,000 better elsewhere, earning something like 10%, then why am I investing in another stock that's giving me only 5%? It really doesn't make economic sense. Yeah? So we want to use this as a benchmark to compare against an alternative investment possibility. Yeah. Now, we also talk about how efficient, you know, we're from Singapore, we are a country where we emphasize a lot in excellence as well as in productivity. How do we get productive? How do we get efficient? Is to make every single dollar. We have good management skills, technology, so that we bring about sales. So this is called turnover ratio. Turnover. Yes. So now the next step that I'm going to bring you in is to combine. Combine this turnover to get what we call return on assets. So if you recall, Vicky has yesterday, um, she was she's my best student, you know, student in Red Commerce. She will recap every day what are the things that we have, uh, she has taken away. So she wants to know what is my return per dollar of assets. Yes. Now this, yes, and this is a function of two ratios. 
the first ratio was what I introduced yesterday. It's called profit margin, abbreviated as PM. Yes. Now, this is called activity ratio. This is called productivity mm. or efficiency. How efficient are you in turning around fast enough? The faster, the better. And therefore, we now know in order to generate a good return, you either find a service or a product with high margin or it could be something with very thin margin because it's competitive then you win your competitor, the company wins the competitor by being super efficient, full utilization of the assets. And that's how we call it efficiency. Mm. Then we turn our attention to the anger of an investor. As an investor, I want to know if I could make use of other people's money. And therefore, I'm very concerned that with the same dollar that the company make called earning, this is the earning, is it making high profit and high dollar and cents per dollar of my investment? So you see, this ratio, again, is A divided by B, helps me to gauge whether the board of directors, the top management who is running this company, for which I'm an investor, are they operating a profitability, a profit company, profitable business. So I will here make a slight correction on this. A profitable business. It mm. must be a profitable business. And a profitable business does not depend only on high efficiency, high profit margin for the right products that they choose, but also make very good use of other people's money. Now, Vicky is my greatest fan. She is so thrilled when she learned about... Yes, I'm activity. so excited. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. Because this is the ratio in our previous series. We talk about a lever. I can never lift up a one-ton load yes. with my own efforts. So I need to depend on another person's effort for the other people. So this is called asset leverage. You can see the power of ratio. Wow. If I combine the return on asset, otherwise known as ROI, and then combine it with a very clever use of other people's number, yes. I further, I further multiply. This is really a multiplier yes. effect. Until I reach a very high ROE. This is I how see. all businessmen achieve the highest possible return on equity by leveraging on other people's money and leveraging on good utilization of assets. Wow. Um, that, that really is a very important number we're talking about. And Professor, you're breaking it down to very simple terms and understand. And that's slide number 14. I'm excited right. to see your other slides. <laughs> okay. When we come to the next slide, it will be the compilation of wow. all the power. <laughs> this is the power of all the powerful stuff. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, now you, if you are with us today, I'm going to say that Thanks to Professor Ko, she's giving us all this free education and she's giving back to the community wherever you are. I mean, it's so powerful, isn't it? What happened my teachers taught me when I was young? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Ko, could you take it away from slide number 15 here? Sure, Return sure. on equity. Yes, Vicky, your professor must have also taught you. It's just that when you, when you don't have a vested interest yeah. in investing in a company, you're focus and oh, yes. your priority may not be there yet yes. but you know <laughs> when, you, when you have a skin in the game exactly <laughs> you skin in the game you have to take up your own money and your own money hurts because i want to have the highest return per dollar of my investment wow. and who says financials and classes are boring look at look at professor coach she's making it so excited for us and so that's uh, slide number 15, Professor Cole. That's right. So we've 
Slide number 15, you will then get very excited that if I were to look at a share today, all right, let's make a hypothetical situation. Yeah. You are undecided that with your $10,000, should I buy Coke Inc, Coca-Cola versus PepsiCo Inc? I see. Same dollar, should I do company A or company B? Wow. Here, here is a good breakdown. If both yes. companies were to give you the same 20% return on equity, mm. we then take a magnifying glass to search for the company that can give us, as far as possible, perhaps a high profit margin, yeah. very efficient asset turnover, and perhaps more moderate leverage not too high not under leverage but neither do we want to over leverage yes yes wow so if i'm going to give you a number all right you don't need to be a mad genius to look at it if the 20 percent for cooking hypothetically is made up of one percent profit margin only all right and maybe uh four times of efficiency this is in number of times which is 400 percent mm. But they over borrow. I see. They borrow so much that it veers on bankruptcy risk, i.e., insolvency risk. Then I would rather stay away from this kind of company. I because see. it means that if the company were to go into lawsuit by the lenders, as a shareholder, I am a residual owner. My risk is the highest. Yes. But it, you know, it also gives 20%. Because it's one times, four times, five times. So now let's take, a look. let's take a look. If this is Coke, and the next one is Pepsi. Yeah. Unlike Coke, if Pepsi's return on equity is also 20%, but yeah. this is due to 2% times, mm. right? Times five times of efficiency. And they didn't borrow as much. They mm. only borrow two times. True, yes. Which means there's a lot of room for PepsiCo to increase their borrowing when they need to borrow some more money. But they are so, if they are wow. relatively more efficient and their product is giving them a higher profit margin. Then we know the right stock to choose is PepsiCo in this hypothetical company. Yes. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this. I mean, it's, it, it makes everything like demystify. So slide number 15, demystify a comparison across the board of companies, right? And this is 101. We're not talking about very deep, difficult uh, 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 ratios. We're really taking off the ratios from the financial statements. And as uh, retail investors, you need to know something about comparison across companies. And I think slide number 15 just blows my mind, Professor Ko. I mean, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you as my fan, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue slide number 15, 16 and 17. My pleasure. And therefore, when we buy wow, shares... Key ratio. Yes. You know, We're everybody talking about the business. crown of all the ratios, Professor. Yeah. It is the one of the most well uh, talked about ratio because people use this again as a benchmark. Yeah. So as to size up whether I am I paying too much for the company or this is just the right price to pay for a listed company. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As you can see from the ratio here, it must be referring to a listed company. Yes. We open discovery for its prices. So the yes. market price per share. Yes. When divided by the earning per share will give mm. me what I call the PE ratio. Yes. Yeah. So let me repeat this. It's the market price per share. And the market price per share you can actually get it from the open market. Yeah. For example, but it also fluctuates. From, yeah, from, yes. from Yahoo Finance, etc. Look at the, the, the market price per share divided by the earning or the profit per share. And that one you can actually find it from the financial statement. So you yes. do a uh, division. So that's called the PE ratio. That's the mother of all ratios. <laughs> yeah, because this ratio tells you how many times if I were to bring you to uh, slide 17, yeah. all right, this is where you extract the figure from the PL of any company. You mm. can see from the bottom line 
because they are required to produce this net profit. It's the same as net earning. It has yeah. exactly the same meaning. So if I know this amount is 0 0.15 of a billion, because you can see from here, yeah. these are all denominated in billions. Yeah. And then the next thing you do is, all right, if I am earning 0 0.15 yeah. billion, yeah. and the company issues 1 billion worth of shares that is yeah. outstanding. Yeah. So the simple number would be the EPS of this company, which is earning for one share, is actually 15 cents. So that is 15 cents per share. Yeah. So today, I would then go to the market and look at what is the price of the share selling at. If yes. it's selling in the market at $1.50, when $1.50 is divided by the earning per share of 15 cents, Yes. Then you have this hypothetical situation that the PE is trading at 10 times. So that is PE for you, Vicky. Yes. And of course, it, it means also the higher the better, isn't it? Yes. Normally, PE is interpreted as a benchmark and it changes from industry to industry. So you ask a very good question. Is, is it the higher the better? It yeah. depends. All right. Oh, okay. So I will show you in a while. Let me just bring you to a website that I have looked up in preparation for this talk. Wow. I have the pleasure of showing you a company which is quite well known now, especially in Singapore. in Singapore. Yeah, we don't have many companies that successfully got listed on the stock exchange of Singapore. Yes. And let me introduce Nanofilm Technologies International Limited. Yeah. Now, this company was listed successfully in 2020. All right. Last the year. Yes, just last year. And you can see how they are trading. It has a PE ratio of 44 times. I will show you wow. where to find this. Yeah. This is just humongous. Yes. This P-E ratio of 44 times is in fact underpricing nanofilm because all the shares listed on the stock exchange related to technology are trading way above 44, Vicky. Oh, wow. They are way above 44. When Facebook was listed, trade, uh, listed at an IPO price of $38, I yeah. think the P-E was 80 times. 80 wow. Times. That is like blows the mind. But this is the kind of valuation for the American tech market. Stocks. Yes, for tech stocks. So that is why I bring this up as an example because you'll get so excited, you know, when you see this yeah. thing. PE ratio is deemed by people in US as being low. That means you are making it cheap. Yeah. Why make it so cheap and make it look so bearish? Yeah. But look, because of the background yeah. of the share, it is considered as actually maybe a little bit overpriced. Why? Yeah. Because in Singapore, most of the shares are trading between 12 to 15 times. In oh, terms wow. Of yes. So let's take a look. It's over here. I will show you in a bit. Yeah. Right. That. This is the price of nanofilm today. Yeah. Now. All right, this is 9th of, this is 10th of uh, September. It's trading at about $4.15, $4.15. Yeah. Yeah. Or 4 17 In the afternoon, it was $4.17. Wow. Yes. And you will be able to see that. And this, when is, I, this, is, this is live. We're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this is live. This is really the price of the share at that moment. At, at that moment, yes. Yeah. And now it's four fifteen. So this was at its closing. Yes, which is yeah. uh, just now. Which is just now. Yes, that's right. Now, you take a look at what is happening here. Shares of Nanofilm Technologies was originally floated on the stock exchange in Singapore at $2.59. Yes. But today, is trading at $4.15. Right. Professor, are you able to go back to your slides? Sure. 
yeah, for the for the next five minutes, um, you know, you have shared a lot with us. For the next five minutes, are you able to uh, wrap up uh, the concept of PE ratio, which is the mother of all ratios? Certainly, PE ratio gives you an idea of how bullish the investor are when they buy a share. So if yeah. I were to compare in Singapore, most of the shares are trading no more than 15 times. Yes. Uh, before that, Professor, can I just interject? I think your screen is frozen now. Are you okay. able to get me back? Yes. All right. Sure. So now, uh, can we go back to your slides? Yes, certainly. Just give yeah. me a So, so, so it world. really means that, okay, one disclaimer, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't mean that we dive into buy the stocks, buy at your own risk. But really, the concept of PE ratio is the mother of all ratios. If you are a retail investor, I think uh, for the last two sessions, yesterday and today, Professor Ko has really unpacked a lot for us. Uh, um, that's why she's a professor. She made it so simple. And you are able to explain to your grandmother and grandfather. I think that's the success of Professor Ko. And, and Nanofilm, it is a company that is uh, listed in the height of the pandemic, Professor, and that's really mind-blowing, Professor. They really went on to list it in, in, in the height of the pandemic in 2020, Professor. That's right. And after listing at a PE ratio of yeah. 44 times, yeah. their profits grown so much that wow. earning per share just shot through the sky. Yeah. And actually, the PE is not as expensive as 44. It's only 25. Yes. yes. And that is why... All That's these will potential. Be, yeah, so this will be reflected in the share price. It didn't stay at two dollar fifty nine cents. It yeah. went up to four dollar and seventeen cents, four dollar and fifteen cents. Yeah. So that is would you, yeah, Professor, would you like because you're making me very excited? But again, a disclaimer, ladies and gentlemen, we are not endorsing or condoning the shares. We are actually teaching a concept of P ratio and the potentiality that it can go upside. And, and and slide number 15 was very powerful that you gave us. Yeah, so I'm going to show you the slide that? again. Yes, yeah. would so you like to continue from there? Yes. Just now, when we yeah. were talking about the number of times, I then yeah. took the real life example. Yes. It was in the afternoon, just before the closing, and then it sort of slightly, it dropped slightly to 4.15, as you could see from the internet a while ago. Yeah. If I base on $4.17, and the fact that this company is generating an earning, this is the actual number, is a historical based on the last financial statement per share was mm -hmm. 9.2 cents per share because they have X number of shares. It's just huge. The PE ratio rose back to about 44 times. It's hovering around 45 times. Yeah. And that's why the share price has gone up from its initial IPO price of $259 wow. to $217. Wow. That's just incredible. And you're talking about very typical uh, scenario of, uh, uh, can I call it the blue chips, the tech uh, price, you know, and we're talking about uh, shares in America uh, of all these tech stocks. It actually just goes up. Uh, it, it's just incredible, Professor Ko. Uh, when we have a knowledge uh, of what we can grasp and not depending on the brokers. And of course, I'm not saying that brokers are, are not uh, valuable. They do have a role to play. And that's why their jobs are there because they manage for you. You don't have to sit overnight and look at the stock price and look at the comparison of the financial statements. But I think as a retail investor like yourself, myself on a man in the street, when they've got an X amount of dollars, I think it's so essential for us to be aware. Uh, it's, it's a very basic consumer knowledge that you're imparting, Professor Cole. Thank you. It was my pleasure, you know. Um, of course, the example I use, which is 44, when I take it to the international stage, it's yeah. actually considered as cheap. Yes. But because of the condition in Singapore, where all the shares are actually trading between 12 to 15, I'm going to show you, a, a, you know, another uh, extract here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, let me just launch the share screen. Yeah. You will be able to see from here that most of the companies, almost half of the companies in Singapore have PE ratio under 15. 
So mm. for nano film to achieve 44 and 45, it's already break through the, the, the ceiling already. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and this, this picture will show you very clearly. Uh, PE ratios of most companies are actually not hovering so anywhere near there except for nano film and many tech related stocks. So tech related is, stocks. Okay, yes, this is a good way for us to appreciate that when companies are trading at 44, that means the view, the perception yeah. by the investor that is that it will add, be able to do wow. very well. Yes. Yeah, it really, it, you, what you have really shown like it's a snapshot of that there's a potentiality for it to go that way. Certainly. So, and I think uh, what you have encapsulated, uh, you talked about Apple, then you talked about a, a, a hypothetical scenario of uh, PepsiCo versus Coke, you know, just a net, that's, and that's in slide 15. And ladies and gentlemen can actually rewind and take a look at some of these slides, slide 15. And, and I think that really blows our mind. And also you talked about tech stocks in general. And, and I hope that for the next sessions, uh, we can talk about uh, technology companies um, as a whole. I mean, we can talk about the stocks of um, uh, uh, Facebook, Google, Apple. We're talking about Google. We're talking about ABC, the Alphabet company, right? We're talking about Alphabet, the mother of uh, Google. And now we're talking about another uh, tech company that's listed in Singapore, Nanofilm. Uh, bear in mind, ladies, again, uh, again, this is a caveat that uh, this is just for general knowledge, not encouraging you to buy the stocks. But I think, uh, Professor Cohen, you have encapsulated for us. It blows my mind. I mean, there are definitely a lot of services that is needed, like uh, the brokers. Uh, the broking company, the brokerages, that whereby you give them your funds that they can manage for you. And I'm not discounting their services, but it's so important, Professor Ko, that, you know, we don't go in blindly. At least when the brokers say, hey, these stocks are good, you know what they're saying, right? You can actually trust them or you can counter them when they're trying to say, hey, these stocks are, are going this way. And then you can say, hey, maybe I read something about that. So you are in a, you are in a, in, 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 in this realm of I know what I don't know, rather than I, I don't know what I don't know. So you're actually giving us the kind of empowering us with the kind of knowledge to know that these are very basic information as retail investors that we should know, Professor Ko. You're yes. bringing us to a new realm. That's right, because fundamental is so important. Yes, fundamentals. Yes, so that if the market crash because of yeah. some, um, you know, very unusual shocks, it may take a while for it to recover, but a fundamentally sound stock in the long run, it doesn't have to be 10 years. In the yeah. long run, it could be as, as short as like a year or, you know, yeah. one and a half years, it will recover because yes. they are fundamentally sound. Yes. Yeah. And you're talking about uh, the stocks here and really it's just about one snapshot of some concepts you're imparting, but definitely a lot more and more episodes. You're, you're going to give us much more analysis uh, and much more understanding of the financial statements. So Professor Ko, thank you so much uh, to you and also the ladies and gentlemen who are tuning into the show. What a mind blowing uh, 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 session we have got. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, all brokers out there and all uh, people who are talking, who are our experts, sit down and let's listen to Professor Ko with no, with no disrespect. No, they all should really sit down and listen to you because, you know, you're able to explain in very, very basic terms and that, that excites me. And you are able to ex explain it with such generosity of your knowledge and with such passion um, coming from you. Uh, Professor Ko, thank you once again for the next 15 seconds. Would you like to say anything to goodbye, to say goodbye and also to wrap up, Professor Ko? I want to thank you again, Vicky, for inviting me and to all the audience here who are so patiently seated in front of their laptop or iPhone and listening in to hear. Thank you once again and you have a nice day ahead. So, you know, this wraps up uh, part one, part two of all the financial uh, ratios. But definitely, uh, Professor Ko, this is just like scheming on top of the surface. You know, in the next sessions or so, you will actually dive in further to tell us what it entails. And because we don't want to be overbought with everyone, with all the numbers, you're just telling us 
Now, these are some of the things that add from the head knowledge. We know what we are looking out for when we are looking at the business times, uh, when we're reading the business uh, uh, news on, on the finance, uh, Yahoo Finance. At least we know and we don't, we don't uh, 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 switch off ourselves. You know, we don't just 100% depend on the brokers. We know exactly uh, some of these things, some of these ratios, even if it's just finance 101. Thank you so much, Professor Ko. And I think that excites us for us to tune in to the next episode. You have made it so exciting and so, <laughs> so exciting for us, even in financial analysis. Professor Ko, I, I, you know, you really should be my professor when I was young in school. Why haven't we, we got you in the classes? <laughs> really, thank you for your kind words, but it's really my pleasure to yeah. be able to share the little knowledge that I have. Thank, Thank you, you so much, again. Professor. You know, myself, in the next uh, 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 15 seconds or so before we wrap up and say goodbye, just a little bit of banter with you. You know, when I when I was having my financial classes, my accountancy classes, it was really boring because I almost gave up in the classes. <laughs> you Did know, you fall asleep? <laughs> so not only I fall asleep, I failed. You know, it's like I, I took the module again and module again and my textbooks were so thick. Um, and definitely you have made the class so interesting uh, for us. And, uh, when I, and I think you're right to say that as we grow uh, more mature and when we've got skin in the game, we tend to really sit up and really want to listen up. Hey, what does this tell us, right? Um, of course, when you're a student, when you sit back and then you think, hey, we're just going through the numbers of the financial statements. It can be so boring. But you know, this has a huge impact on our lives, Professor Ko. Certainly, because when you are a student, you don't have enough capital to invest. There's no <laughs> attraction to get all the return on your investment. Yeah, and also and also that, that textbook that is about 300 or 400 pages, they're just numbers and numbers and numbers. It doesn't mean anything to you when you're just 18 years old. But I think what you have shown is that, yes, when you are 18 years old and now you look back, uh, what you are actually studying now, like your students who are not 18 years old, they're 19 years old, and they're looking at your financial uh, uh, classes now, I mean, there's a huge impact on what they're studying now. I mean, it's not boring at all. Uh, Professor Ko, you have made it so interesting, so powerful for us. Professor Ko, thank you. Oh, your nice words. Thank you so much. I appreciate well, ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, please tune in to the next EP, the next session with Professor Ko. Another wonderful session with her that she has so been so kind to make it complimentary for us in the internet world. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Your Money, Your Life, featuring Professor Ko Simit from Singapore. Brought to you here every week by dmetropolis.com and Lifestyle TV USA.